suck last. Why, Torben? Mitch and Bryce. Does running leave you looking like this? Being runners ourselves, we know that running sucks, but over the course of our running careers, we have learned some tricks of the trade to make running suck a little less. Running is a great form of cardiovascular exercise. Our goal is to educate you on the mechanics of running and hate running a little less. Some of you are probably thinking running is simple, and it's always gonna suck. Well, how about you consider this? When you run, there are almost 100 different muscles, joints, and tendons that all have to work and fire correctly to propel you forward. Within the muscles, there are thousands of muscle fibers that all have to fire correctly in order to execute good running form. So, so believe us that there is more running than meets the eye. Think about this. When a human starts running, their hamstring and quads have to work together in perfect harmony to pull their knee up. From there, the hamstring and quad have to relax a precise amount to allow their hip to pivot so they continue, conti can continue their cycle underneath them. On top of that, their, every time their foot hits the ground, their joints and bones are withstanding up to five times the individual's normal body weight. To put that in perspective, Jack Daniels running formula states that proper running cadence is about 180 steps per minute. If someone weighs about 150 pounds and runs an 8 minute mile, they are ultimately dropping a 750 pound weight on their leg 1440 times over the course of that one mile. Contrary to what most people believe, stretching is not essential to running. All you need to know about the relationship between stretching and running is interesting. You either need to stretch every day after a run, or never stretch after a run. You become susceptible to injury if you stretch some days, but not every day. When running, there are three main muscles to stretch. Your hamstrings, your quads. The first is the calf stretch. Find a wall, push against the wall. The idea is to try and put your back heel to the ground. This can also slightly bend your knee to stretch upper calf. Next stretch is the quad stretch. To do the to perform this quad stretch, you need to find a wall, push up against the wall, and grab your toes and pull up. Your legs, your leg that is up, should be relaxed and should not be out of line with the leg that is firmly planted on the ground. The next stretch is the hurdler stretch. What you gotta do is you gotta go down on your butt, pull one leg in, you gotta reach out to grab the other one. While you're doing this, you gotta make sure that the leg you're reaching for, that those toes are pointed up. When running with efficiency, your arms should be bent at a 90 degree angle or somewhat close to it. 
when you run you want your arms to go up so that your shoulders form another 90 degree angle almost like you're going from your eye socket with your hand to your hip pocket your hands should not be closed in a tight fist but slightly open it is important to land on the ball of your foot doing so makes your foot act like a spring to cushion your legs although this person is running barefoot we do not recommend running barefoot because although as humans we can run barefoot we are not meant to we are also not made to run on pavement When running, it is important to have a good pair of shoes. Having a great pair of shoes reduces injury and keeps your legs feeling freaky fresh. Usually, a good pair of running shoes costs around $100 and lasts about 3 to 6 months or about 300 to 600 miles. A simple way to test what kind of shoes to get is the wet foot test. What this entails is making your foot damp and stepping on a piece of paper. This will tell you what kind of arches you have, and as a result, what kind of shoes you might be right for you. The first foot type is high arches. If you have high arches, you would want to get something neutral with less support. The Nike Pegasus are a great example of a neutral running shoe. Neutral running shoes are some of the most basic running shoes on the market. For people who do not have flat feet, or for people who slightly supinate, which is almost everyone. Neutral running shoes have almost the same amount of cushion from the heel to the toe of the entire shoe. Next is the stability. An example of a stability shoe are the Brooks Adrenalines. They are worn by a lot of runners and offer support for people who pronate. Stability shoes generally have slightly more cushion in the heel of the shoe than the toe of the shoe. Last is motion control shoes. The Brooks Beasts are a great example of a motion control running shoe. Motion control running shoes are generally very cushioned and are for people who are flat footed and pronate severely. Motion control running shoes have more cushion throughout the whole shoe.